Hi, uh, Green Court Renewables PLC Investor Warning. Uh, I checked the accounts of over 40 Irish wind firms and I have a degree in business studies which includes financial accounting. I checked my results with a, and a couple of other accountants and other people who have engineering experience and this is what we found. The wind farms last between, and it's highly debatable, 16 and 22 or three years. The, the output degrades, the output goes down, that's available online as they get older, as is quite normal with many machines. The bearings change a bit and all of that, and they have expenses repairing. You will get there where uh, Siemens, the manufacturer of turbines, is, has a huge loss posted. I think it's 30% of its share price fell. It guaranteed the operation of its wind turbines and they're breaking within the guarantee period and they have a huge uh, debt to pay for that. So the things are not going well. Now, in one specific case that I have time to deal with here and I'll deal with more, John Lang, PLC, the famous builder in McAlpine's Fusiliers, bought the Glen Carberry wind farm in Tipperary. They also bought one in, in Germany. They bought it. They weren't into it a couple of years till they realised they were making nothing. They were never going to get back the capital cost. What should be happening is the amount of depreciation of that wind farm should be written off over normal accounting practices. For machinery on a farm, that's uh, seven years. Even though you could get 12 years out of some machinery. And then there's obsolescence. But definitely it should be seven, eight, nine, ten, anything up to 12 years might be all right. But they're writing them off over the full expected lifespan. Okay, they're writing them off over the full expected lifespan. And that Glen Carberry wind farm, that's over 23 years. That means that when you're halfway through its life, uh, you only have half of the capital cost written off. Now, that is not good because the, you can have breakages and the real depreciation should be a lot sooner than that. There are also issues about their legality, the European Court case uh, 2419, and about the machinery directive and all of that. But there is also the point that as windmakers increase the size of wind turbines, the existing ones become obsolete. None of these ever paid, and what they're telling the companies is put in a bigger one and you'll be hunky dory. And that is clearly not the case. Okay, so now John, uh, John Lang sold, sold out to Green Court Renewables. It couldn't make money on its wind farm in Glen Carberry. And now Green Court Renewables has it, and they say, Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, well, we're making a fortune. Airgrid gave the output of wind farms in Ireland in 2010 at 34%. I measured it and got 18%. SSE Electricity had it in the paper the other day that the wind didn't blow in the first half of 2023 and they're way down on their profits. The reality is the best you're going to get is 18, 19%, maybe 20 in a good location. And if it gets older, you'll be way down to 16 and 15%. The reality is that when you pay your interest, and that's increasing, and you pay your expenses, and all of the expenses go with it, the account shows you usually have a little bit of money left over. You do not have enough to pay an annual instalment on the capital cost to your lender. You do not have enough. You can't pay it. Also, if you multiply the profits the profits by the expected lifespan, which I say is 12 years or 13 years, but which this company, Greencoat, says for this wind farm is 23 years. No matter how you do it, they can never, there's never enough to pay off the capital costs. In one wind farm I, I checked, the, the, the payoff period is 140 years. The lowest one I got was 30 years. So they can never pay off the capital costs. So what the government expects is that parent companies buys them, and forgives the capital cost. They don't want to be paid back. They only have to get paid a bit of interest on the loan or whatever. But they don't have to don't want to be paid back. When it came to John Lang to do that, John Lang was not prepared to do it. 
when government discovered John Lang was not prepared to do it, they allowed a payment to John Lang's wind farm in Lincarbury out of the PSO levy, which is illegal. They can only do that once or twice. The minute it became available, John, or, or obvious that John Lang was getting out, Green Court was there to pick up the tab. Now, my question to investors is, how do you expect Lincarbury wind farm and all of the Irish and British wind farms to suddenly turn a profit when John Lang couldn't get it to do that? Is John Lang's accountants wrong? Is his auditors wrong? Or is he stupid? Now, I think the question to that is obvious. The reality is it's only getting investors because it's a Ponzi scheme. As long as they get new investors, uh, finance houses, people retiring from military, police, nursing, a fire service with a gratuity paid by the government. They are trying to get that pumped in to companies or individually into shares in, in Green Court. Eddie O'Connor had ones in Chile. They're in trouble. The banks had to forget their money there. And in the case of air management, asset management in New York, they have Eddie, or the, not Eddie himself, but mainstream renewable power, of which he was the CEO up to recently. They have that company. Now, I am not won't guarantee that Eddie is still the CEO. He was, but whoever it is, mainstream is in the courts in New York for being followed for, for I think it's 280 million. And they don't go in there if they think there's a hope of getting the money back. They know they're not getting the money back and all they can do is try and grab whatever's there. And what do you do with a partially constructed wind farm? It is worthless. It is worthless. Now, at the end of the period, a wind farm, the land goes back to the landowner. The companies own nothing, no land. And the cost of taking them down should rest with the company. They may walk off. If they walk off, where is your investment? There's no residual value except scrap iron and copper. So the thing is an absolute loss maker. And the big mystery is how did they continue? But the bottom line is, folks, Green Coats, Green Coat bought over this co bought over that company, uh, Glen Carn, in 2001. And all a big glowing report, a big thing. Uh, John Lang completes the investment in Irish wind farms. You get it there. There, there, there. there it's there. So they bought it over because if they didn't, it was going to go on. John was going to walk away. John Lang was going to go walk away. Green Court has been buying over all over the place. And what they're doing is they're painting a rosy picture. They're getting mugs and stupid people and Dublin doctors and all this. They're getting them to put the money into this, thinking they're saving the planet and thinking this is the future. Well, we'll just wipe out that page there and I'll tell you the story. Uh, the, the Irish price for green coat today is 93 cent. The, the share was floated at one euro, at 100 cent. Today you'll get 93, and yesterday morning you'd only get 90. Okay. They also have a British site, and it's GRPIR, Green Coat Renewables, and it's on sterling 91.15. So if you bought these at the beginning for a euro, you would get one pound, one euro and ten at one time. They went up a bit. If you sold, then somebody was left with that, and they're now only getting 93 today. If you bought at the one euro, you're down seven. Yesterday, you were down 10. We'd see, will they go up again? Is there more people to put in the money? They can never make, get our money back. The assets of these companies are way overinflated. They're saying the wind farm is at cost. We paid 50 million for it, 50 million. And how can it have a cost, even after seven or eight years? It's not worth 50 million. This is fakery. This is a Ponzi scheme. And the only way it can keep going is to keep getting investor money in. If they can hold on to the investor money, they can reduce their borrowings and therefore the high interest rates that's going to be for the next few years, they can reduce that. So they're desperate to get in shareholding. Richard Bruton was on trying to get people to invest in community wind, wind schemes. And they're on in the government with a new bill about community support, giving money to schools and all this. So here you have um, Green Court Renewables expected to build the schools and help the schools around the country as part of their uh, flowery, uh, flowery presentation to the public. That is a very bad way 
to ground any current, any company. Now, I know other companies like Genesis and Heineken sponsor uh, sports events and all that. I know all that. But still, that is what they're resorting to. You don't see CRH doing it. You don't see any of the big builder companies or Chadwick's or any of those doing it. They might sponsor a race at the school or whatever, but you don't see it. And even now, Airbridge stopped doing sponsorship of events up in Kells, children's events. So the point is, folks, on 10 minutes, if you have shares in Greencoat, you're down a lot of money. If you count inflation, you're down another 7 or 8. You're down... 11%. So if you bought a 100,000 in green coat shares two years ago, you are now going to get 93, and that's deflated by about 11 cents. At the very best now, you get out with 80 cents. And all I can say to you is, get out, slip out nice and slowly, do something else with your money, put into something that, just look at it. Will it have assets? If you invest in Diageo for Guinnesses or Roadstone, those assets are there. There's something to be bought and sold there. There's nothing with a wind farm. You cannot get that through to people. And replacing a wind farm is a totally different thing. <coughs> it's not done today because they keep telling the companies we need bigger and bigger ones and the plint and all that won't work. So what contribution are they making? Germany's opening coal-fired power stations. Germany's in a recession because of fuel. I thought Germany has 61,000 megawatts of wind. Why isn't it delivering? And therein lies problem we'll let you go with that folks i've now given due warning due warning to to green coat renewable shareholders you'll never you'll never as long as you lie down get anything if i buy a bullock in the mart and bring him home and feed him and look after him he'll make money if i buy a cow she'll have a calf and make money if i bought if i bought a a a, a, a digger and let it out for hire we say i bought a digger at a hundred thousand a small digger I, I, it'll bring in money It'll last a lot bringing money. But what's happening here is it's like if I bought the digger for a hire comp for my own hire company and I let it out to people who doesn't pay me. If I'm only getting in half of what I expected in the hourly rate, well, very soon you're never going to pay back your digger and your interest rates will be too high, be higher than your receipts. Why people cannot understand that is one of the biggest, biggest mysteries. But as they say, you can fool most of the people all the time. That was the same. Folks, on that now, we let you go. Any, after this, I won't mention it again. Green Corp Renewables, it's a loss maker. It'll never come back. It can't come back. It can't make a profit. And if you want to stay in there, it's on your head. It is. My advice is get out. And I'm not your financial advisor. You can do what you wish. I'm not taking responsibility for it. If you get out and the sky rocket, that's not. I won't take responsibility for that. Why should I? But you're warned. This is what I found. Get somebody who's qualified to read accounts to list out all of Greencoat's wind farms. Go into the company's office and check the set of accounts and check the auditor's report and see what the money that's left over at the end of all their trading. And that is what they should be having to pay off the capital costs. Then go into the auditor's report and you'll see the auditor saying that this wind farm is insolvent only for the parent company is carrying it along and forgiven the capital costs. Except that with Green Corp Renewables, you are the forgiver. You are the charitable organisation who is actually bailing it out. And do you want to be in that position? That's up to you. Bye. We'll see you back for something else. And comment underneath. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Thank you very much.